Hey there, good morning. My name's Josh Moore, and I welcome you to our children's message this morning. And uh, before we get started, I am going to just say a little prayer for us. So uh, if the kids are there, gather them around, and uh, let's take a moment to just ask God to be with us and to help us during this time. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that you sent Jesus into the world that we could know you. And I pray that this would be a special time and that you would give us understanding. Be honored in our time and bless the children, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming. It's a real joy to have you be here with me. And uh, we're going to talk about God today. Uh, every Monday morning at 930, we talk about God. We talk about Jesus and the Bible. And uh, I'm hoping that you're learning some things here. Now, this week, we are going to talk about a very important topic. And it's how can you get to know Jesus? Right? We've been talking a lot about Jesus, that he was a man who lived uh, many years ago. And maybe you're wondering, how can I know him? How can I get to know him? Well, first, before we talk about why this is so very important, I want to remind you of what we talked about last week, because that was really important too. Do you remember what we talked about last week? Some of you remember maybe? Well, last week we talked about about how to know God, right? We talked about getting to know God. Remember, we said that it would be really wonderful to know um, some famous people, like we talked about uh, LeBron James and, and Dwayne Johnson and people that we, we respect and we see on TV and, and that maybe we'd really want to know uh, some special people out there. And then I talked about how God was, would be the most wonderful person anyone could know, right? Because God made all of this, the world and the galaxies and the mountains and the beaches, and he made you and he made me and he made all your friends and all the things that you love. He made them. Wouldn't it be amazing to know God? So we talked about that last week, about knowing God. And remember what we said about knowing God? Do you remember We said that we can get to know God by getting to know Jesus. That when we know Jesus, we know God. Because Jesus said all of these amazing things about how he was one with God. And when he spoke, he spoke the very words of God. And when he did things, when he did works and miracles and signs, it was God working through him and in him. Do you remember that? So if we want to know God, we get to know Jesus. And that's why it's so very important to get to know Jesus. So we're going to talk about that today, about how can we know Jesus. And I want to share with you really quick as we get started, I want to share with you a song that was very special to me. I'm not going to sing it and I'm not going to play it, but it was a song called Knowing You. And it's all about knowing Jesus. It was a very special song to me. And it says this, the chorus of the song says, Knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing. You're my all. You're the best. You're my joy, my righteousness. And I love you, Lord. And I remember singing that song a lot when I was getting to know Jesus because I began to really love Jesus and I, I realized that knowing him was the greatest thing ever, that he was the best person ever, and that knowing him was a real joy and privilege. So I hope that, that you will get to know him as we talk about these things and that you will have a relationship with Jesus just like I do now. That would be really special. I want, you, I want that for you. There's nothing better for you than to know Jesus. So, but again, I want to ask the question, how can we know Jesus Right? How do we know him? How do we get to know Jesus? Jesus lived 2,000 years ago on the earth. He lived 2,000 years ago. So how can we know somebody that, that lived way before? Do we create a time machine like the one in Back to the Future and, and, and go back and know Jesus? What do we do? 
obviously we're not going to create a time machine. So, but that would be really cool if we could go back and see Jesus when he lived on the earth. But how do we know him? Well, how do people normally get to know each other? Think about this, right? How do we normally get to, to, to know one another? We talk to each other, right? We might sit down like these two people here and, and, uh, and, and talk, or maybe adults especially sit down and they might have coffee, okay? And they laugh and they share stories, uh, maybe they uh, maybe they go out and do fun things together. Maybe with your friends. How do you get to know them? Right? Maybe at school. Well, right now we can't we can't be at school. But how did you get to know your friends? Yeah, maybe by you know doing uh, work together at school, or playing on the playground, or sitting in the cafeteria together. Right? You get to know people by talking with them and listening and sharing life with them. Right? So that's how we get to know people. Well, how do you get to know people that you can't see or talk to, right? So we, Jesus is not right here. I can't see him, right? Uh, he's, not, he's not here. I can touch him with like this Charles Spurgeon bobblehead guy here. Um, I can't see and touch Jesus, so how can I get to know him? It's a good question, right? It's a very good question. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Well, how would you normally get to, again, no, no, to know somebody that you can't see? Maybe like, uh, maybe your, your mommy or your daddy or whoever takes care of you. Maybe they've told you about someone else that you, that you know is a real person, but you never got to see them. Maybe like a great grandmommy or a great, great granddaddy or someone. Okay, or maybe a long time uh, relative of yours, someone that lived a long time ago. And, uh, and they tell you about them and they share stories about them, right? They tell you stuff that happened or that they did. Or maybe even if you're really lucky, you have something like this, a letter. Maybe your great grandmommy or great great granddaddy or someone wrote a letter and you have it. Or maybe they have a diary and it tells you a little bit about who they were. This is a letter. I wish I had a letter from my great, great, great uh, granddaddy or grandmommy, but I don't. This is a letter that one of my girls wrote to one of their friends because they can't be together right now. They can't see each other right now. And so uh, one of my kids wrote a little letter to her friend, and it's, it's a letter. It's really, really late. Uh, we, we have failed to get it in the mail on time, but she wrote this a few weeks ago for Easter. And, uh, and she says, I have some questions for you. She says, what is your favorite kind of ice cream? What is your favorite season? And what do you love to do for Easter? And so she's asking questions, and she's, and she's wanting to know some things about her friend, okay? And that's really special, but a letter is a way that we can talk to people whom we can't see, right? We can't see or we can't touch, so we can write a letter. Or maybe we can discover some things about an old friend or relative through a diary. Maybe they had a diary, something where they wrote it all down, right? I know a lot of people have diaries. Maybe you have a diary. Well, if we have some stuff written down about that person, then we can know some things about them, can't we? Yes, we can. And that is one way that we know about Jesus, right? Because we have a really, really special book that's kind of like a whole bunch of letters put together. Or like a diary that's put together. But this is God's diary. This is God's letters to the world. And it's in a book called the Bible. It says the Holy Bible. The Holy means special, right? This is a very special book. And in here, it tells us all about God and about Jesus. What he did, who he is, what he said, what he wants from us his desire to know us, all of these things are in this special book, right? So if we want to get to know Jesus then, or get to know God and Jesus, then we should, we should probably spend some time in this book, right? Because the Bible is a bunch of letters that God has written to the world. And do you know what those letters tell us about? I've already said it a little bit here, but do you know what these letters and these books tell us about? 
they, all of them, even though sometimes it doesn't say, like if you go to the beginning back here in some of these old books, Second Kings and Chronicles, even though those books may not say the name of, of Jesus in them, the whole Bible is telling us about Jesus, okay? The New Testament especially, which is kind of the newer stuff that's in the back of the Bible, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and all the rest in there are telling us about Jesus. It's all pointing us to Jesus and telling us about who he was and what he did for us. It's really special. So, all that to say, guys, maybe you see what I'm, what I'm, where I'm going with this and, and uh, what the point of all this is. What am I going to say about how to get to know Jesus? What should we do if we want to get to know him? Well, we should probably read the Bible, right? The first thing to do if you want to know Jesus is to start reading your Bible, okay? I want to encourage you to, to do that. Maybe some of you are like, well, Pastor Josh, I can't read yet. Well, that's okay, guys. I'm sure you have someone in your life who can read to you or at least tell you the stories of the Bible, right? Maybe mommy or daddy or maybe an older brother or sister or whoever it is that takes care of you. Maybe it's grandmommy or granddaddy, okay, or an aunt or uncle, or uncle. Okay, they can read you the Bible, all right? And if you don't have a Bible and they don't have a Bible, okay, then you let me know and I will get you one. I've got a whole bunch of them, okay, and I'll make sure that you get one. All right, but this book tells us all about who Jesus is and what he did for us. And so that's the place to start, is to, is to read your Bible, okay? And get to know who he was and what he did, okay? But knowing a person like Jesus is more than just knowing a lot of facts about them, right? So um, my, my daughter's letter that she, she wrote to her friend here, okay? If, if her friend tells her the answers to her questions and she says, you know, I like... Uh, I like a cookie dough ice cream. That's my favorite ice cream. And, and we usually go to our families, uh, to my, my dad's you know, parents or something for Easter, and tells, tells her all of this stuff about, uh, answers her questions and tell her all this stuff. She still doesn't really know her friend, does she? She just knows some stuff about her friend, right? She might know, okay, a few things about what she likes to eat, and maybe she knows, excuse me, what she looks like and stuff like that, but... That doesn't mean she really knows her friend, right? Because knowing someone is more than just knowing facts about them, right? So if I know that you're a little boy or a little girl, and I know that you're, let's say, five or seven or maybe ten years old, and I know where you live and I know uh, what school you go to, that's just facts, right? That's information, and that's important, and that's good stuff to know, but it doesn't mean that I really know who you are, right? So knowing Jesus is the same. It's not, if we just study this book all the time, which is great and wonderful to do, we can know everything there is to know about the Bible and still not know God, right? We can still miss him and still not really know him in the way that we should or in the way that we know a close friend. So there's more to knowing Jesus than just reading our Bibles, okay? So the next thing we must do if we are to know Jesus is to believe in him and to trust him, okay? Jesus wants us to believe in him. It's one thing to, again, just read and say, oh, Jesus was born in Bethlehem and, and Mary was his mommy and Joseph was his daddy and he grew up and he did miracles and he died on the cross and he rose again from the dead and now he's in heaven with God. That's a lot of information about Jesus. But do you really believe it? Do you believe mm -hmm. that Jesus really did those things and really said those things and really is what the Bible says he is? That's another very important thing if we're going to know him as we must believe in him and we must put our trust in him. Okay, and trust means that you, um, that you look to someone for, uh, for maybe for help or, for, or that you believe what they say, uh, that you uh, depend on them, okay? that you, um, uh, when they tell you they're going to do something, you know they're going to do it. 
Um, it's it's putting your uh, your faith in someone, but it's also um, relying on them, right? Jesus wants us to believe him and to rely on him. Just as I hope you trust your parents or your whoever it is that takes care of you, right? When they say, I'm going to pick you up from school, you trust that they're going to pick you up from school. And that's important too in, in getting to know Jesus, that we trust him in that way. And the Bible says that if we believe in Jesus, and we trust in him, like I've just tried to explain. First John, which is one of these letters in this very special book called the Bible. Um, First John, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Wow. That's special, isn't it, guys? When we believe and when we trust Jesus, we become a part of his family. That is amazing, isn't it? It's just simply amazing that we could be a part of Jesus' family and be children of God. That's incredible. And of course, if we're children of God, if Jesus is, is related to us, if we're in his family, of course, he knows us and we know him, right? We, we've become really special friends at that point, right? So if we want to know him in the way that we might know our brother or our sister or mommy or daddy, not just knowing facts about him, but if we really want to know him, then we believe in him and we trust him and then we become a part of his family. So we enter into this really special relationship and we know each other intimately just like family members know each other. That's really awesome, isn't it? So that's the second thing about knowing Jesus is putting our trust in him and when we do that, we become a part of his family. Now, I want to invite you to do that today if you haven't done that already. Okay, I want to invite you to put your faith and your trust in Jesus. And maybe you still don't know a whole lot about him and you need to think about that a little bit more. Well, that's good. That's good and I want to encourage you to do that. But the Bible is a place where we can read all about these things. So get your Bible Get your mom or your dad or someone that can read to you and read your Bible and put your faith and your trust in what you read and say, I believe these things, Jesus. And when you do that, you will become a part of his family. And, uh, and you can invite Jesus to be in your life and tell him that you want to follow him. And we'll do that in just a moment together if you would like to do that. But there's one more step, okay, to getting to know Jesus in a really special way and not just knowing about him but really knowing him. One more step. Oops, I'm sorry, I skipped a slide there. There we go. The third thing you must do to know Jesus is simply to have relationship with him, right? Okay, because sometimes people are in really cl close relationships, like a mommy or a daddy or brother, sister, um, or a child and a parent, and they don't talk to each other. Maybe something bad happened and they don't talk to each other. Um, and so they don't really have a relationship with each other, do they? Right? Well, if we're going to really know Jesus, then we need to have a relationship with him. God wants that with us. He longs to be in relationship with us. So if we're going to know him, we need to be talking to him and listening to him and thinking about him. Okay? So a big part of relationship with God, of knowing Jesus, is prayer okay we pray we talk to God we share our heart with him and we tell him what we're feeling and what we're thinking and that's a really really important part of knowing Jesus is prayer and even though he may not speak back to us like a friend that we could touch or feel would speak back to us okay he speaks to us in the Bible okay and he communicates to us in our hearts somehow Okay, and he leads us, and there is a way that God can speak to us if we listen and if we're careful. He will guide us and direct us, just like a parent or a mommy or daddy might. They might give us wisdom and advice, and Jesus will do that too as we get to know him more and talk to him more and pray to him more. Anyway, so I hope that helps. Those are a few thoughts about getting to know uh, God through Jesus, and uh, I hope that was helpful, and uh, remember... Uh, if you don't have a Bible, please let me know and I will get you one. 
And, uh, and I also want to draw your attention to this really special book over here. It's called The Knight's Map. And it tells us a lot about how important the Bible is in getting to know God and Jesus. And so I want to um, invite you to, to pick up a copy. You can get one on the internet or ask me and I can try and get you a copy. It's a really, really wonderful book. And it helps, especially with little children, it helps little children understand how important it is to have the Bible, which is like God's map. Um, it, it guides us and leads us and helps us to know him. So anyway, let's pray. And if uh, any children out there are feeling like you really want to know Jesus and to receive him into your life, then uh, you can pray this prayer with me right now. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus that we might know you. I want to know you more, God. I want to know your son, Jesus. Help me to know him. Show me more about who he is and, and what he's like. I believe in him and I put my trust in him. And I pray you would guide me and you would lead me and that you would send your Holy Spirit to live in my heart, that I might walk with you and that I might know you more and more. Thank you so much for hearing my prayer and it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Well, thank you for joining me, guys. Again, we'll do this next Monday at 9.30 a.m. And uh, God bless you. Take care.